Upgrading an old shower is a great way to refresh your bathroom. Installing a brand new shower enclosure is actually a job you can do yourself. I'll show you how it's done easy as. The one I'm installing is the Round Calais model. Make sure you check the instructions that come with the enclosure you're installing and if you've got any doubts, just get in touch with a licensed shower installer. And as always, check with your local council to make sure you're up to date with the latest regulations in your area. Now a really good tip before you kick off, you might want to take out your shower liner and just let it open up because it can get a little bit of a memory from sitting in an awkward position. Now as you can see, I'm in a studio environment, but it doesn't matter what style shower you're installing, the principles are still the same. The main thing is that your walls are plumb, straight and square. And if you're in an older style house, you want to ensure that your floor is level. You may need to put some self-leveling compound down before you start. One of the first things we have to do is slip our shower tray in and make sure that your waste pipe lines up. Now what I'm going to have to do is cut some nogs that are going to go just above the shower tray. The reason for that is it's going to take our wallboard and also it's going to give solid support for our shower liner. Now you're also going to need some solid fixing for where our door screws to our wall. So as you can see I've actually got some solid timber running all the way up. My door starts about 20 millimetres in from the edge of my shower tray. If you didn't have that, you'd also have to put some solid fixing on the ends to take your door. A wee tip, before we silicon and glue, grab a piece of cardboard and trace the curve of the corners to use as a guide for cutting the jib aquiline later. Now it's a good idea to take a quick photo of the position of your plumbing and framing for future reference. Now the shower tray actually comes with a slight film on it, so what we're going to do is leave the bulk of the film on and we're just going to peel the back bits off that's going to up against the wall for now. Now this particular shower comes with its own silicon and adhesive, but if yours doesn't, just double check exactly what type of adhesive and silicon you should be using. Now, before I put the shower tray in, what I'm going to do is add some silicon to the bottom plate now the reason for that is because when you stand on the shower tray, if the shower tray is actually touching the framing, you could get a bit of squeaking. So this is just acting as a buffer. Now we're just going to add a little bit of our adhesive to the bottom of the feet before we slide it in. Leave the tray for 24 hours to let the adhesive set. Now I've just put some cardboard so I can stand on here, that's going to protect my tray as well. Now when we cut our jib aquiline, we want it to be 10 millimetres above the top of the shower tray. And also I want it 10 millimetres off the floor as well. So 105 millimetres is exactly what I'm going to cut off the bottom of our wallboard. The width of my tray is one metre and I'll set my accommodation square to 105 mils high and continue that across. I've cut out my cardboard corner and I'll use that as a template for the curve. I can then use my utility knife to cut that section out. Okay, now I'm just using my ruler as a 10mm packer. I've applied adhesive to the wall and I'm just ready to throw this in now. For more information on installing wallboard, check out the How to Reline a Room Easy As Guide. Rightio, I'm just about ready to measure out to cut our holes out of our wallboard. So just a wee note to remember that our jib aquiline is actually going to be 10 millimetres off the top of our shower tray. So I'm just going to take that measurement, 9.53, and I'll take 10 millimetres off that. So that'll be 9.43 to the centre of my mixer. And that's 1,500 to the centre, so I'll take off 10 mil, so that's 1490, 1490, 280, and 280. I've transferred the measurements onto the jib line. Now just before you drill the holes out, you just want to double check your instructions that come with your mixer just to make sure you're cutting the hole size out as per instructions. And also as a double check, you also want to take your face plate and just to make sure that that is going to cover your hole nicely.
Now, so what we're going to do is just temporarily take our shower aligner over to the wall. And there's a couple of different things we're checking for. One, that it's actually the correct width for the shower tray. And the other thing is, we want to be looking to make sure that our shower aligner is actually sitting hard down and parallel with our shower tray. Okay, now as you can see, that's sitting there absolutely beautiful. If yours was slightly out of parallel, what you can do is rule a pencil line parallel with your shower tray, take it over to a solid surface and gently shim that off with a sharp block plane. I'm just about ready to mark and drill out our shower liner for our mixer. What I'm gonna do this time is actually measure hard off our shower tray because that's exactly where our liner's gonna be sitting. Just before I crack on and drill our holes out, a couple of wee points. The dimensions that I've got here, I'm gonna take off two millimeters for the thickness of our liner here. So I've got 380 mils off my wallboard, so I'm gonna take two millimeters off that. That'll bring it down to 378. Now, just before I drill the hole, I've double checked my dimensions of the hole size with my instructions that come with the mixer. And also, just go really nice and slow and make sure that your drill bit is really sharp. It's really important that you just do this over the top of a solid surface. Place the liner in position and using a pencil, mark around the edge so you know exactly where to apply the adhesive. Then apply silicon in a continuous speed, 10 millimetres from the top of the shower tray. And at the very end, come down onto the tray and return about 100 millimetres just to ensure a waterproof seal. Now, the tip when putting the glue on, we want to come in from our pencil line that we put on around the shower liner. 80 millimetres and we're going to do strips of 80 millimetres vertical. I'm not going to do any horizontal strips whatsoever, except for right at the bottom. The reason for this is, a gas will come off the glue as it sets and the vertical lines will allow it to escape out the top. Wipe the back of the liner down to get rid of any dust or grime. And then to attach, place the corner in first and then fold each side onto the wall. Now you can see the silicon right down the bottom that's oozing out on that point. That's exactly what we want to see. And then just wipe the excess silicon off with a damp cloth before smoothing the liner down to help the adhesive take and then leave it to dry. I'm just going to peel that back just on that edge, just enough to get the wall profile on. Now add a bead of silicon to the back of the wall profile before fixing it to the wall. Now, as per my instructions, it says I have to allow three millimetres from the inside of my shower tray to the outside of my wall profile. Now, it's just a really good idea just to double check that it is level when you're installing it. And then do the same on the other side. OK, I've got my wall profiles on. Now it's time to start assembling our door frames. So what I've got is a bottom extrusion and a top extrusion. So what we got here is a side panel. Now, when we're installing these, we've got this little locking mechanism on the side that's gonna connect it to the wall profile. So at this stage, we're gonna leave that open. So to do this easily on my own, I'm just gonna assemble this on a table. Now be careful with the edges of the glass. Don't place it on any hard surfaces without protection, as it could shatter. Okay, the first thing we do is slide our channel onto our glass. And now we're just going to attach it with a couple of screws at the back. Now effectively it's exactly the same for all four corners. To keep it nice and easy, grab a spare pair of hands to help you lift the frame into place. And on this side here, I'm just half setting it into our wall profile so I can concentrate on this side here. Now our channel wants to go on the outside of our wall profile here and it's not going to go in properly unless we've got our locking mechanism fully open. Once I've got that in, I can then lock it and then start working on the other side. Ah, 
Okay, now that we've got it all locked into place, next thing we need to do is make sure that our outside channel here is parallel with our shower tray. So we're just gonna release the locking mechanisms on the bottom only. And then we're just gonna pull that out off the wall on either side. So it should be around about eight millimeters off the channel. And then we'll just lock it back into place. Now that the bottom's set, we're just going to make sure that the top is plumb. To do that, I'm just going to release the locking mechanisms at the top and using our level on the glass, we're just going to plumb that. Pull it out till it's looking good. And lock it back up. Okay, the next thing we're doing is putting our seals on to our glass. Now we're just making sure that the flap is on the inside. We're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. Use a rubber hammer to softly tap the seal on and then do the same for the other side. The next thing we do is put our handles on. So with these handles here, we've got a set of screws that hold these two together. So we want the holes, the screw side, on the inside of our glass. Just before we take our doors over to our shower unit, we're just gonna attach these seals. Now with these ones, we're gonna make sure that the flap is facing outwards. Same deal, start from one end and work your way along gently with a rubber hammer. All I have to do now is fit the doors to our rails. Now obviously our handles are gonna go into the middle and we've also got a sticker on our door indicating which way is up. We've got a safety lock in the middle of our wheels here. We just want to make sure that they're turned to the side so we can actually get it in. And then once we get the wheels in, we can lock those back in place. We also just want to make sure that our seals of the door is on the outside of these seals here. So we're going to install that and then we're going to put that lock back in. Now with our bottom rollers, these are pretty simple. All we do is push these down and they just clip into the bottom of the track. The next thing we have to do is put our seals to the doors. Now these have actually got a magnet on each side of them, so they join together quite nicely like that. Now it's really important when you do put these on the doors, there is a way that it's supposed to go on. So as you can see, there's a slight angle on each of them. So depending on which way your water source is coming from, you wanna put it on the door accordingly. So my water source is coming from here, so I wanna make sure that when the water hits it, it's not gonna go through the seal that way. So I'll be installing that one on this door. Okay, so they're joining really nicely, but if you found that your doors are only heading on one end, easy way to fix that. Got a little bit of adjustment on these screws and both of the doors. You can wind those in or out and that'll move the door left or right accordingly to the which way you want to go. Now if your shower's got a sliding door, now's the time to install your adjustable door stops. One of the last things I have to do is apply the silicon from where it sits on top of the shower tray. Now I've already put some masking tape there which is pretty much level with the top of my tray. And I'm just gonna fill that full of our silicon that comes in our pack all the way around. And I'm just gonna come up the wall 100 millimeters. Now, just a really good tip, when you are applying your silicon, you never actually wanna put any silicon on the inside of your shower. It's always on the outside. Now you can remove the rest of the protective film. Now as part of council regulations, they require a bead of silicon at the top of the shower liner all the way around. So we have to wait at least 24 hours for the adhesive of the liner to go off before we can do that. That's the job done. There's your new shower enclosure. And it was easy as.